Hello everybody, this is David Collins back from Ann Arbor Guitars and I want to make a real quick video about something to watch out for with acoustic end pin jacks. Um, one of the reasons why they can be notorious for coming loose and potentially do even worse. Uh, when this Larabe came in, came in for a whole bunch of other work, but the electronics weren't one of them. However, um, when I looked down at the back end of it, first thing I noticed is how far the end of the jack threads are submerged inside beyond the uh, strap button attachment. Um, and that can be kind of a red flag, and I want to show you why and a quick and easy way to correct that. First thing to note is that all acoustic end pin jacks, more or less, are 12 millimeter or 15 30 second. Those are pretty much the same thing, about four thousandths of an inch difference. Um, but in applications like we're referring to here, we can consider them effectively the same. A lot of manufacturers will recommend drilling out the hole, or not drilling it rather, you never drill an end pin jack hole, you ream it with a, a proper straight fluted or slight twist flute reamer, um, but never with a spiral drill. Um, but uh, a lot of manufacturers and pickup makers even will um, instruct to ream out your end pin hole to half an inch. Um, I disagree with this quite strongly uh, because whether it's the Switchcraft or the Italian jacks the bags use or any of the Chinese jacks, none of them are made at half inch. They are all made at 12 millimeter or 15 30 second. Now what is half an inch is the nut that fastens on the outside of the guitar body. At its widest point the nut is a half an inch. But if you look in a little bit closer at the nut you'll notice that the bearing surface of the nut is less than half an inch. You can see uh, all the way out from here out to this point here is half an inch, but if you look at where the bearing surface is, even on a good machine switchcraft nut, it's actually several thousandths of an inch inside. Now you go into the cheaper import nuts and you can see how sloppy these are and how that bearing surface is well inside, it's well under a half an inch. So if we ream a hole out to half an inch and then we put a very thin washer, what are these washers measure at? Even the Switchcraft ones, the good washers, are only about 32 thousandths of an inch. Um, most of the ones on cheaper washers are going to be more like 20 thousandths, paper thin. So if we have a half inch hole and then we try to force a nut over a very thin washer and that nut has less than a half inch bearing surface, it's just going to want to plow into that hole. And this is what a washer can look like uh, that comes off one of these jacks that has been over tightened into a half inch hole. It totally flares, flares the jack out, pushes down the inside right into the hole right as you would expect. And this is what your guitar can end up looking like. Um, please excuse the quality of the photos. I didn't have any of this level of damage on hand so I dug up some old ones that are a bit low resolution. Um, but this is the guitar that that washer in question uh, came out from. And as you can see by this big gap in here, this was indeed a half inch hole that was uh, reamed in the guitar rather than 15 30 second. Now this is a cross section of a little demo block that shows what happens inside there and why it flares out like that. You can see all this slop up in here where the hole is wider than it needs to be um, and then you can see this gap in here where uh, it just has open airspace unsupported inside when you tighten down the nut. And this is what the inside of the jack area would look like on that jack on this guitar we have with us today. So there's a way to correct this even if the hole is reamed out to half an inch. I'd prefer it not be. It's always better to have a little bit of side support and a little bit of support underneath the washer. But there's a way to, uh, there's a way to prevent it from causing further damage. And that is to coordinate the inner nut so that the large diameter of the jack Every jack has a large and a small diameter. We have this section, which is our, uh, our 15 30 second diameter, and then we have this, which is approximately 3 8 And so this is the large diameter I'm referring to, this is the small diameter of the jack. What we want to do is coordinate this nut on the inside so that the face of the large diameter comes up almost to the outside of the guitar, just shy of flush. And then as we tighten down the outer nut on the small diameter section, um, we want to feel it just as it starts to snug up against the guitar and feel tight enough where the jack isn't going to turn. We want to feel it hit the face of that large diameter of the jack. Then we can really torque it down 
and it never puts any additional uh, pressure on the finish or the body of the guitar. That pressure is simply locking it down to that large diameter face without actually moving the nut further inward. And that's what it takes to really get a jack that is stable and that you can lock down and is never gonna come loose on you out in the field. So now we're gonna show you how to do that very quick and easy. Like I said, it only adds a few minutes to the job. We're gonna start out coming in with, uh, I use this little rubber block, very simple, simple, easy to make tool, a half inch piece of rubber um, with a hole drilled in it, just undersized from the end pin and a slot cut in it to make it a uh, quick and easy wedge, a, a non-marring grip. So we can pinch onto the jack with that and get the strap button off. Now we're going to come in with a round rod. Don't, don't use Allen wrenches if you can avoid it for this because they can really mar up the threads. Um, a round rod and a half inch wrench. And loosen up the jack just enough to get it finger loose. Then all you need is a quarter inch dowel. This is a, a bell hanger drill bit that's just been sitting around that I, I tend to use for this. Plug it into the jack and then loosen up the threads and let the washer and nut fall off. Slide the jack uh, inside the sound hole, up to the sound hole. Sometimes you will have to loosen the strings if the wire retainers are securing the wire all the way along. This one had plenty of slack. Now I'm just going to back off the shielding cover just a little bit um, and then do the same with the nut. And this can, you can have to repeat this sequence two or three times, but you can see each time takes about 30 seconds. So there's really no excuse for not taking the extra minute or two to double check it. We put it back onto the post, bring it out and check. That still looks a little bit too far in for me. So same thing again, back it off another two turns roughly, lock those together so that the shielding cover doesn't come loose and rattle, and then feed it back in to the hole. And I might have gone a little too far on this one, but we'll see. Tighten it up just to check, and we can show you how to tell you made a mistake and went too far. So now this nut has been marred up a bit, and um, for the same reason, uh, same mistake that I made when I first went to take it off. I went to grab a half an inch um, as you would find in a Switchcraft, uh, but it's actually a 12 millimeter. So coming in with a 12 millimeter, and it's really tightening down, but I can still turn this jack. So that tells me I have, uh, I'm tightening against the large face before it's hitting the side. So not a problem. We just loosen the nut back up, slide it out, and we are going to bring this nut forward again, about a full turn. Lather, rinse, repeat. And it's really starting to, oh, so close. It's, it was just starting to snug up against the sides, but it's just a hair, it's just a hair too loose. It's not really, when it hit that large diameter, um, you could almost leave it there, but I, I don't want to. There's no excuse for leaving it close enough when it takes so little to make it entirely right. A little bit more than a quarter, about a third of a turn, roughly. There's a little bit of wiggle room with that star washer on the inside. It absorbs some of the compression um, when you tighten. So, you know, you can be often on these plus or minus a half a turn, really. Okay, so this should be the sweet spot. Now we Come in, tighten up the outer nut. It's snugging against the body. That feels pretty good. That's almost it right there. I can turn this if I really push it, but it's, it's plenty snug. It takes a good amount of pressure there. And right there, it just hit that large diameter. So now, now I can come in and really give it an extra bit of torque and it is locking down hard against that large diameter face without putting any unnecessary uh, or overdue pressure onto the finish or the sides and it's not gonna cause any damage there. Then all we have to do is 
pop this back on, come in with a rubber block, give it a grip and an extra bit of a turn, lock it in place. And now that jack is locked in perfectly and it's not coming out. Um, it's not going to come loose and spin and start to break the solder joints and wires on the inside. Um, and you can see uh, what it's supposed to look like, what you should be looking for when you look at an end pin jack, in that the threads of the jack portion are pretty much flush with the end of the end pin jack. Now on some of them, some of the Chinese, uh, the, uh, the no-name import jacks, and I believe even on the Switchcraft jacks, you can actually see those threads of the jack come just proud, just a hair, um, a little bit outside. But what we don't want to see are those threads submerged inside. If those are inside the edge of the jack, that means you have a gap uh, behind the washer. And that gap uh, is unsupported. And even if it's cut to 15, 30 seconds, I still prefer not to have it, even if the hole is reamed proper, uh, because there's just no need to have that unsupported area in there and to be relying entirely on pressure from the uh, the nut and washer against the finish to hold it and hold the jack from ever coming loose. If a guitar gets dry in the uh, in the winter time, um, wood can shrink slightly and loosen up, relieve just enough pressure on there where it can start to wiggle loose over time. If it's locked against the large diameter of the uh, jack, that'll never happen. It's locked in place. So you can see this is a pretty simple uh, few minutes. It, it only it doesn't take long to fit it as I would consider proper here by locking against that large inner diameter. That ensures that you're never going to damage the finish on the guitar. Uh, the jack is never going to come loose and fall out. Uh, it's just the way it should be done as a default in my opinion and only takes a couple of minutes. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to like and subscribe, and we will try to get back as often as we can to share any tips and tricks like this with you, and hopefully we'll see you soon.